Congressman Clyburn, thank you so much for joining me again. I know this is a, a busy day, perhaps not as busy for Democrats. But look, as I was just talking about with Congressman Buck, it appears as though the plan to empower McHenry to make him speaker pro tem is falling apart. What are Democrats doing right now, if anything? Because I know that there were some preliminary discussions going on potentially about a bipartisan deal. What are Democrats doing to try to get the House back open? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. We are really uh, at a critical point uh, in the relationships that we have here uh, on Capitol Hill. Our leader, Hakeem Jeffers, has been making it plain uh, for several days now uh, that Democrats are all about keeping uh, our focus on the people of this country and our duties and responsibilities to them. And he has been saying for some time now uh, that a bipartisan path forward is a very good way to go, especially uh, on an interim basis or a temporary basis, uh, while the Republicans uh, work out their differences. And hopefully, at some point in the not too distant future, uh, be ready to have a permanent speaker. And he's offered uh, Democratic uh, support uh, for such uh, a situation that they seem now uh, to be throwing cold, cold water on. Uh, so I don't know where we're going from here. I just hope that we remember what our responsibilities are uh, to the American people, to the security of this country, uh, and to the stability of American families. Well, I guess a two-part follow-up question to that. On, on the one hand, Patrick Henry is saying he actually hasn't talked to Leader Jeffries yet about empowering him as Speaker. Do you, even though you're at this standstill, this roadblock, do you want to see that conversation start? Oh, I think that uh, Leader Jeffries wants to see it start. I, I've been watching and listening uh, to him up into our meetings. He's made it very clear uh, that he sees... Uh, it has our responsibility uh, to seek common ground. Uh, and the best way to do that, in my opinion, is for us uh, to get a broad uh, mass, critical mass of both sides, Democrats and Republicans, uh, to come together uh, to uh, elect uh, someone uh, to get us uh, to where we ought to be until uh, such times as the Republicans can get their act together. I just think that's, that would calm the waters, that would cool things down. Uh, and I think uh, it would say to the American people that all of us uh, are interested in putting aside our partisanship uh, in order to focus uh, on their futures uh, and uh, on our country's security. Congressman, as you just heard Congressman Buck say to me, he doesn't want a bipartisan solution. They want to be able to do this with Republican-only support. So what are you saying to your Republican friends and colleagues to try to break that logjam? As, as you are saying, OK, you would be open to a bipartisan solution. It seems like there are a number of Republicans, based on our reporting, who don't think that's the right path forward. They feel like that would be a betrayal to their voters. Well, you know, I've been around here for quite a while now. And and this whole, what we call the Hastert rule, um, I'm not too sure uh, that that rule uh, deserves credibility that my Republican friends are giving it any more uh, than Hastert's service as Speaker uh, maintained uh, credibility. They ought to walk away from that rule just because of the name of it. Uh, and let's really think about what we need to do uh, in, on an interim basis until we, uh, or to they, uh, can get their act together. Look, we are all Americans. We are all uh, great defenders of this democracy, I would hope. But it seems to me that there are some uh, on that side that I do seem not uh, to want to defend uh, this democracy, not want to continue uh, our trek toward a more perfect union. But it's what this country has been going through since it's found. And we know the history of the country, and we know what we've been through uh, as, as an American people. 
and what we need to uh, do in order to seek uh, that more perfect union. And that is get beyond our comfort zones. I know it may be very comfortable for them uh, to do things uh, if they got everybody in their caucus agreeing on it, but sometimes in order to get things done, each side must get beyond this comfort zone. Uh, big things happen in this country uh, when people do that, uh, when they accommodate each other. It happens in families. You know, I tell people all the time, uh, no family can succeed uh, with one person uh, being the one uh, to always get his or her way. Yeah. Uh, and that's the same thing uh, with the Congress. We have to learn the art of compromise. And I can't think of a better way to compromise than for us to put together a critical mass of uh, members on both sides of the aisle and get us to beyond where we are today. Co uh, that's what the American people like to see us do. Congressman, I want to ask you about one other issue, some tweets by your fellow members of Congress. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and um, Elon Omar, they have tweets up saying that Israel is to blame for the hospital blast in Gaza. Um, those tweets have not yet been removed, despite U.S. intelligence, an assessment which shows it was a rocket misfire from a militant Palestinian group in the region. Do you think your Democratic colleagues should delete those tweets, and should they apologize? I'm going to leave it all up to them. Uh, I do not pass judgment and those, that sort of thing. I stand with the President of the United States. Joe Biden made it very clear uh, that he uh, was there in Israel. He had seen uh, all of the, the, um, the videos uh, and the other uh, pictures of what may or may not have happened. And he came to the conclusion uh, that this was an error uh, on the part of a third uh, party uh, to this uh, conflict. And I am going to stand squarely uh, with the President of the United States. We should have one voice when it comes to our foreign policy. The President has laid out uh, what that position is for the country, and I support him 100%. So given that, was it appropriate for your two colleagues to tweet out something that runs counter to what the president said and to U.S. intelligence, Congressman? You implied that those uh, tweets went out before the investigations were made. Uh, and if they did go out before the investigations were made, I understand that because there are people uh, who thought uh, that it had come uh, from that source. The investigations have been made, and they indicate that it may not have been, and I'll let them decide will not the tweets ought to be taken down. I don't do a whole lot of tweeting, uh, especially uh, when it comes to uh, issues involving national security and our relationships uh, with our allies around the world. All right, Congressman Jim Clyburn, thank you so much for joining us at a critical moment for the House of Representatives. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.